Hey folks, wanted to get started now on assignment season. This video is just going to help talk a bit about assignment one for InfoViz Studio and explain some of the things that we have on the Canvas page. And I hope to provide a little bit of context about what we're looking for and the kinds of things that we're hoping you'll be able to do. So the assignment is an infographic design. It is due midnight March 27th although keen-eyed people may have noticed on Canvas, where it's now published, that it is officially due at 15 minutes past midnight at the beginning of March 28th. That, you're welcome, is 15 minutes of grace time to allow you to deal with any technical issues around getting your submission in by midnight. Do not contact me if yours came in at 12.16 a.m. That's what the 15 minutes of gratis is for please actually try to submit at midnight. That last 15 minutes isn't going to get the job done. Maybe try starting a bit earlier next time. The tools which we're primarily going to use for this are Prezi Design, which we've been learning in class, and Excel, which will be covered in some of the upcoming tutorials. Although it should be said that if you're more comfortable making an infographic in some other tool, you should do so. Instructions on how to make that work will follow in this video. And it will be individual submitted individually, like all assignments in this course, on Canvas. As I think I said in the Q&A session uh, earlier in the week, we're doing individual assignments so that you have an opportunity to do everything by yourself. Where other studios uh, focus on working as part of a team and collaborating and getting to leverage each other's strengths, this studio is all about you getting to take things from start to finish. A little bit of visuals, a little bit of tech, a little bit of communication, putting it all together to give you the confidence to go out there and do this kind of thing uh, in the commercial world. As a result of that, we focus on quality over quantity. Since you're going to be working by yourself, we really want you to iterate and get things perfect. We're not looking for lots, we're looking for great. All right, let's dig into the assignment page. Uh, this is what it's going to look like when I hit publish, although perhaps with a slightly different thumbnail when I update that video for this one. I'm hoping YouTube will gift me with a slightly more flattering thumbnail where I don't have crazy eyes, but honestly, let's see what happens. The goal of the assignment is to design an infographic from the provided data that is compelling, effective, and original. Compelling in that people want to believe the story, effective in that it gets the story across and supports it, and original in that it is something interesting. Not necessarily original as in nobody's ever made it before, but original in that it's different novel in some way. The assignment will be completed in Prezi, or you can use a different tool if you're certain you'll be able to get to the place you need to get to on that, and submitted through Canvas. You should start by coming up with a point that you want to make by exploring the data and then building that into your infographic in the form of text, charts, and graphics. You'll then uh, conduct a usability evaluation of that infographic with, I would say, at least about five of your peers. And we're going to go into the specifics uh, of how to conduct a usability evaluation on an infographic. It differs slightly from how you might conduct that evaluation on other interaction design uh, products. And then you're going to talk about how you revised your design based on that evaluation. You're going to submit the thing itself, plus the documentation of your usability study, plus the justification for your concept, so like why you did things in a particular way, what the narrative you were trying to convey was. So COVID data is really the elephant in the room for this studio. There is no more topical, large-scale set of data sets or phenomenon which is surrounded by a huge amount of data worldwide over the last couple of years. I'm honestly sick of talking about it, you're honestly sick of hearing about it, but at the same time, it's actually a hugely uh, important cultural touch point. Having a quality infographic in your portfolio or in, uh, in your CV that references a global moment and says something original in a compelling way is a very communicable project to have done. So yeah, we're all sick of it, but there's a reason why we're still talking about it. 
we'll be working with COVID-related mobility data. So this is something that Google and actually Apple and a couple of other companies have released anonymized aggregated versions of the data they have internally in, in Google's and Apple's cases based on uh, mobile phone movements about where people are and how they've been moving around. So the pandemic's really changed how we move and where we go. I'm not going to tell you exactly how to use the data or exactly which part of this mobility data to use. Here's the Google data set page where you can grab reports. Uh, I would actually grab the CSVs rather than the PDFs, but you can grab reports for virtually any country in the world and even see the regions within that country. You are not limited to working with that data. You can grab other data from other sources. Maybe the story you want to tell requires COVID case or hospitalization data, or you want to look at um, economic data, or Apple has some data that really complements this that talks about different rates of walking, use of cars, and use of public transport that aren't covered in this data. You're not required to go and get extra data, and, and I think this is really important. The marking for this assignment excludes your data analytics skills. So we're not giving you extra marks for doing something complicated with the data or processing it in some complicated way. Do only the processing that you need to do to support your narrative. The later assignments in this subject will cover your data analytics skills once we've all had a bit more time to practice, practice with Excel, uh, etc. Uh, hold on to the end of the video if you're still really freaking out about Excel. I have some resources that you can look at. So let me go through the data set structure a bit more. For each of the regions within the Google data, for each day, the data set contains the following features. So this is all within one row of the spreadsheet. Activity levels in retail and recreation, so like shops and stuff. Groceries and pharmacies, the specific subset of shops where we have to get day-to-day -day goods, food, etc. City parks and national parks and forests, etc so outdoor recreation, transit stations, which actually includes like bus, train, etc., but also taxi stands and car rentals for some reason. Google just lumped all this stuff together. And the two big ones, workplaces and residences. The data is normalized, that is represented relative to some baseline against this normal period of the month or so before the pandemic began, so January, February, 2020. That means that it is sensitive to seasonal changes. In some parts of the world, that's the middle of winter and people don't move around outside a lot because there's four feet of snow. But in some areas, that's uh, the high tropical season where people don't move around a lot because it rains all the time. Uh, so be careful when you're looking at say far Northern Australia or Southern New Zealand. I wanna really just highlight something here. You are not expected to visualize all of these data points for even one region, certainly not all of these data points for many regions. You should pick some subset of them that tell a story you're interested in telling. It would be a clear example of not reading the instructions for you to just grab all the data and throw it into a chart. That's not an infographic. Let's go on to the submission instructions. So you'll be submitting on Canvas via a text entry box with the link in it. The link plus some documentation following after that. The reason why we're asking for a link submission is because I don't wanna require that anyone purchase a pro version of Prezi. It's not that expensive, but for a lot of people it might be. If you don't have a pro version of Prezi, you're not, allow not allowed to export to a PDF or image. You're only allowed to share the Prezi file on a uh, publicly available link. So that's why we'd like to see a link-based submission. If you want to use another tool, you can make a link to that. Or if it's a tool that does provide a file, just download that file, put it up on some cloud storage platform, Google Drive or whatever, and submit a link to that. But please make sure we can actually open the link. We do not want there to be any permissions issues. That would be bad for you. In the text entry field, follow that link with two headings each of which should have some text underneath it. So the first heading should be your concept. And within that, you should spend a couple of paragraphs, no more than a page, talking about your intended visual narrative, how you aim to achieve it, the strategies that you use, the reasons behind your 
design decisions, your rationale or justification. And then there'll be another heading, your evaluation, and within that you'll talk about your usability evaluation. Specifically what you were trying to test, what tasks you set people as a way to try and test that, and how you analyze the results on the metrics that you care about. Oh, also, additionally, and how you changed the visualization based on that usability evaluation. Again, the focus here is clear and concise documentation. I don't want to read long reports because one of the things that you can learn in this subject is to just say what needs to be said. Quality over quantity. This will be graded on these three criteria, data storytelling, data design quality, and human-centered evaluation. Note that those are three of the course's overall uh, learning outcomes, and uh, we have rubrics for each of those. If we go all the way down to the rubrics at the bottom here, you can see what constitutes an HD or a, or a credit or a pass in each of these three categories. So while those are generic rubrics, these points here contextualize exactly what we're looking for to succeed on those rubrics. So data storytelling is about clearly and concisely explaining the story you're trying to tell and the choices you've made to get there and making sure the narrative that you're communicating in your visualization is compelling, clear, and interesting. The stuff that we said above. And if you do that, what you're trying to achieve is, let's say, the HD score, uh, the HD criterion here, highly effective visual storytelling with data that is clear, compelling, and original. Justification clearly explains how the data mapping supports the narrative. So in other words, you wrote in your documentation how you told the story you wanted to tell. Let's have a look at the others, just in uh, comparison. So in the design quality criterion, so design a clean, clear, and communicative set of charts with nothing that shouldn't be there. Emphasize things that are important to your story through the way you map your data. Give your chart an appropriate aesthetic for the story that you're telling, but don't let cool visuals obscure the message. And if you do those two things, so clear and communicative set of charts with an appropriate aesthetic, you're aiming to produce a highly effective integration of aesthetic and or human-centered qualities into the design, with a design that clearly and effectively supports the visualization's narrative. So this is all about the visuals and the layout supporting the story. We are, as someone pointed out in the Q&A last week, all about story here in InfoViz. And then there's the evaluation. So we're gonna show us that you've conducted a small scale but rigorous usability evaluation with a clear plan for what you're measuring and a justification of why measuring that is important and how you're uh, visualization did on that. And then tell us in the text box how you improve the design based on your evaluation. So what you're intending to show there is that your usability evaluation is elegant and rigorous with a strong qualitative analysis of strengths and weaknesses of your visualization and a clear evidence of substantial effort to improve the design where necessary. So we ran a similar assignment last year and there were a number of questions that kept cropping up and I thought I would try and end run those uh, and see if I can answer them now in the launch video so they don't come up again. First question, what's an infographic? The textbook answer is that an infographic incorporates texts, charts, annotations and figures in order to tell a story and explain the insights it wants to explain. Uh, they got really popular about 10 years ago, maybe 12 now, uh, as a way of concisely explaining things with uh, data to evidence that explanation. But then like everything that got really popular, they got kind of trashy. Like there's a lot of bad examples out there. Um, some of the really good ones are actually in this book here. Information is Beautiful by David McCandless. I, I encourage you to check that one out. Even though they've gotten a little bit trashy or rather, some of them are great, but there are also bad examples out there. Infographics are a really nice, concise way of getting across a data-supported message in a visual format. And so that's why we've chosen them as the first assignment for this unit. So I also got questions like, do I have to do one chart or can I do multiple? Obviously, if you're doing an infographic, sometimes one big chart with lots of annotations is what you need, but sometimes a bunch of smaller charts showing parts of the story are what uh, is the best way to go to tell your particular story. And that's really the ultimate thing here figure out what you're trying to explain and then use however many charts you need to do so. I also got some strange submissions last year where people put their charts into a design report. We're not after a design report here. I just want the infographic and that's it. 
everything goes on there. It can be as large or as small as you need. Some infographics are poster sized, some infographics are postcard sized, but whatever you need to tell your story. There is no report other than the documentation paragraphs that we talked about going into the canvas. Do I have to use Prezi? No, you don't. You can use any tool that will be able to get you to the same place. If you're really familiar with Sketch, then look into one of the data import approaches there, like uh, Chippen Charts, made down the road in Chippendale by some uh, friends of mine who run a visualization company. Um, that's a free tool for importing into Sketch. And the only reason we're not using that is because some of the folks in the remote cohort don't have access to a Mac and therefore couldn't use Sketch. But if that's your thing, go for it. If you're a Figma person, then there's, uh, there's a plugin, I think it's called Chart or maybe Data Wrapper, that can uh, bring CSV or Google Sheets data into Figma. And if that's your jam, absolutely go for it. I just believe the tool costs money and there's no way to use it without paying that money. So, so be aware of that. You can use anything that'll allow you to produce an infographic. You can use MATLAB if you want to. Shout out to the presumably three people in the audience who are now going, oh yeah, maybe I could use MATLAB. You probably shouldn't use MATLAB. Uh, can I use templates in Prezi? No. One of the things we're trying to assess here is your visual design skills and you want to produce something that is an aesthetic you've crafted yourself. And if you use the templates, and we have seen all the templates, we will know. If you use the templates, we can't assess your visual design uh, skills and you will get a poor grade. Um, some of the templates are very good. I know, maybe you can be inspired by them, but you definitely need to do it from scratch yourself. And also, can I bring in extra data on top of the stuff that's in the assignment description? Yes, you absolutely can. Bring in whatever data from whatever source you need to tell your story. Just make sure you're using the mobility data in some place. Definitely don't leave it out completely. Maybe you've taken a look at the data and you're just finding yourself completely overwhelmed. You have no idea what any of these numbers mean. Uh, there's a lot of documentation on the Google website itself that talks about how they generated all these numbers. You know, this minus 20 plus 30, what does any of that mean? It's the change from the pre-COVID baseline. So instead of giving me the exact number of people who are moving around, they just talk about the difference to that period in January, February 2020 when they calculated uh, the data. So you should only look at these things relatively, seeing how they're going up and down. The actual number doesn't mean a whole lot. Uh, and then one question that we often get is, help, help, I can't use Excel. Where do I go? What do I do? We are going to cover Excel in quite a bit of detail over the next couple of tutorials as just a way to get you started manipulating data, doing really simple things like removing the ones that are from the wrong region or dropping columns that you don't need, really how to prepare data to go into Prezi or whatever tool you're using. For those who are freaking out about having zero Excel skills, never looked at a spreadsheet before. Excel, I'm just using a shorthand for any spreadsheet tool, by the way, Google Sheets or any of the others will work. Apple Numbers, if that's your jam, you can use it if you're really good at it, but it treats formulas very differently. It has a number of different features in how you calculate uh, things within cells, and the tutors and I won't be able to help you there. If you're dead set on using numbers, you're gonna be on your own when it comes to figuring out how to calculate these things. But if you're using Google Sheets or Excel, which do have relatively interoperable uh, formulae, then I have some tutorial videos for you. These aren't our uh, videos. This is just something to start you off. It's actually released onto YouTube by a guy who makes tutorials for school teachers, upskilling them in various digital platforms that they need. So cool guy, cool mission. Uh, there's three videos that are linked in the description of this video on YouTube and also in the assignment description on Canvas. There's one that covers the absolute basics, although even if you think you're up to date on the absolute basics, maybe skip to the 18 minute mark where he starts talking about formulas. There's often some little things in there that I find students aren't as familiar with as they might think they are. Then the second video covers a bunch of things but the most important one is the difference between absolute and relative uh, or cell references. If you have no idea what I just said, then you need that video, video two in the list. And then the third uh, video goes into some more specific detailed uh, tricks. If you're worried at all about Excel, check those out. Otherwise, if you've got any more questions about the assignment, 
then definitely ask one of your tutors on Slack or ask me in the Slack channel and we'll see if we can cover that in a future Q&A session. Best of luck getting on with the assignment. Don't sleep on this one. Don't leave it to the last minute. It is due on the 27th of March, but actually if you think about it, that ain't too far away. Super keen to see the stuff you get up to and I hope you have fun learning how to visualize. See you next week.